Quail are delicious. Quail are easier to raise than chickens. Quail eggs taste better than chicken eggs. Quail are smaller and less noisy. Quail are less annoying than chickens. Quail require less city permits than chickens in most places. Quail is a commonplace. It's a delicacy. Food shortage. Self-sufficiency. Because I don't only eat what I'm told. Because I have a broad appetite. Because I wanted Thanksgiving to be lit. They don't require a lot of space. Hey everybody, welcome to New York Coternix. Today I'm gonna to be answering a question a lot of people ask me. And I did say I was gonna make a video about it a couple of days ago. So here I am doing that today. We're gonna to go ahead and I'm gonna to explain to you guys why I started raising quail. Welcome back to New York Coternix. I haven't formally introduced myself yet. My name is Kenny. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about is actually a question that's been asked of me a few times and that's why and how I got into raising quail. On the outside it doesn't look like it makes a lot of sense that you know I'd be making any sort of attempt at homesteading but I decided to get into quail because originally what I wanted to do was come up with a sustainable source of protein for my family and myself of course. Uh, I looked into raising chickens but chickens turned out to be a whole lot of work. I would have to get a permit from City Hall, they'd have to come talk to my neighbors, I'd have to build the enclosure what 20 feet away from any entrance or exit including my own plus neighbors and the whole process was a little you know just a bit too much plus they won't allow you to have roosters which kind of defeats the purpose uh, don't want to have to keep running over to the local feed store or you know whatever store to go purchase chicks is too much work so what i decided to do i decided to go ahead and build a hutch so i could start raising quail because quail are a lot less work they don't make as much noise uh, they don't make anywhere near as much of a mess as chickens do and in my opinion they taste a lot better and so do their eggs uh, they have a quick turnaround time so it's pretty commonplace for folks to you know eat the normal stuff chicken pork beef occasionally turkey things like that I'm always ordering the weird stuff on the menu. And it's not even to say that quail is weird. Quail is not weird. This is, you know, the type of stuff we were eating before we were out here eating mass produced chickens that we've never met. There was a time when I was younger, when my grandmother, when I used to stay with her, she used to, her and her friends, used to have a network of gardening, basically. She would grow certain stuff one year, her friends would grow certain stuff another year, then they would rotate their crops, share food with each other. And I don't think I had a store-bought vegetable until I was about 10 years old, honestly. And, you know, once I got back into that, everything came back into place. You know, what am I doing? Why am I, why am I paying money for food that I don't even want to eat? Food that might not even be healthy for me. Food that more than likely isn't healthy for me. So again, this is one of the reasons that I got into quail. I like to see where my food comes from. I like to know where my food comes from. I like to grow my own food. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. A lot of people are, yeah, yeah, how could you kill a bird? How could you eat a bird that you killed? How could you eat a bird that was killed that you didn't see killed and that you never met? I mean, you do not know the manner in which that bird lived. You do not know the manner in which that bird died. You do not know the manner in which that bird was processed after all of this. My whole thing is I want to be able to know. As long as I'm in the know, I feel good about what I'm eating. I have them in a eight by three hutch in the backyard that stands about six and a half feet tall. So the footprint isn't very big. I've got, I want to say about 45 to 50 birds in between the two levels on the hutch and it's more than enough space in there for them. I can actually add more birds to it at any given point in time. As a matter of fact, I have birds in the brooder that will need to go in there pretty soon. Uh, so we're gonna keep an eye on that. But anyway, that's the whole thing. I am very much into self-sufficiency. I uh, tried it again with my vegetable garden this year, but I got a greasy, grimy gopher that likes to come through and eat up everything. He wrecked up my entire lettuce crop. 
I mean, it, it was a mess back there. Also, my broccoli, the stuff that's on the front porch made it. I got a couple of peppers out here, some tomatoes, stuff like that. I also wanted to raise something that wasn't very commonplace. You know, you go to most of your major chain grocery stores, you're not going to find anything that has to do with the quail, uh, especially actual quail. You might get lucky and run into quail eggs at some Walmarts, places like that, but chances are you're not going to get any quality meat from anywhere other than an international market. And even then, you don't get the self-satisfaction of raising your own. How much you going to sell me an egg for? $10? $20. Actually, hey, if you want, you could have some. What, eggs? Yeah. Man, I'm, I love those eggs, man. Really? <laughs> they better than chicken eggs to me. Maybe I'll try them. All right. When you come back, I got you. I also decided to do it for the educational value. My kids seem to be learning a lot from this. I mean, just the incubation process and the brooding process alone. They don't really get too much into the hutch. You know, they want to check up on the birds and everything. But once they get out into the hutch and they're all big and floofy, they're not really that much interested, but the chicks are in constant rotation, so they're constantly with their fingers and heads looking into the brooder. I think that you can learn a lot about life in general, you know, by raising your own food, especially when you're raising animals. Uh, you take on a whole new perspective on everything. You take on a retrospective on certain things, and I honestly think it's one of the best decisions I've made not very many reasons, so to speak, why I got into this. It was more so that I wanted to have a sense of self-sustainability and a way to be able to take care of my family and myself, just in case it ever came to the point where we would need to take care of ourselves and the grocery store is not around or the meat market's not around or, you know, whatever's not around. Can't leave the house. Things like this. And during the quarantine or the lockdown, you know, a lot of us got into the, a lot of things that we weren't already doing. Me, it was quail. Now, I had already raised birds before, finches actually. And I don't know if you've ever seen finches, but they're not poultry, you don't eat them, they're pets. Uh, we raised finches for a lot of other people. And this was when I was way younger. Uh, by the time I was 10 years old, I was pretty versed at raising birds. Uh, didn't do it through most of my adult life up until now and here I am no regrets quail is also a very niche thing and I'm a very niche person so I mean if anybody in the immediate area gets the idea that they want to have anything to do with quail at the end of the day I want them to come around for me I want to be the quail plug so at the end of the day, it's really all about self-sustainability and learning how to take care of yourself. I think everybody should give it a try, you know, whether it be grabbing a pot, throwing some dirt in it and growing your own vegetables or, you know, maybe even having a turkey in your backyard or a couple of ducks. I don't know. A lot of people that I know don't even eat duck. Won't even eat duck. Won't even try it. But I say, why? Why are you stuck on chickens? Why are you stuck on turkeys? Why do you look at a Cornish game hen like it's alien? I mean, you can find a Cornish game hen in any grocery store, it's basically a chicken. What is it that fixates us on the things that we're told to eat? What is it? And I really do like to eat quail and there's only one restaurant in this whole area that serves quail. And I really like the restaurant and they give you four quail halves, which equals out to two quails, but they're really small birds. I honestly think they're Button or Bob White. I don't know. For $9, four quail halves isn't that bad. But at the same time, the ones that I raise here at home are so much bigger. And I mean, I get more meat off of one of them than I did off of the four quail halves that I would at that restaurant. I still go to that restaurant because the way they make their quail is delicious, but still, let's think about this. This different kind of quail, I chose the Caternix quail specifically because of this turnaround time. Uh, I swear, 19 days for incubation is nice. 
Now the only thing about Caternix quails that is, well, I'm not even gonna say is weird. We've domesticated the sense out of these birds. They're dumb. And I'm not saying that in a mean way. These birds are dumb as hell. They won't sit on their own eggs in general. You won't see very many broody Caternix hens out there. Uh, generally speaking, you'll have to take the eggs and incubate them yourself because of the fact that they don't sit on their own eggs. There's not much wrong with that. That's just the way that they've been bred, but you know. But if you're gonna raise Caternix quails, that's just something that you're gonna have to deal with. And that's not to say that you're gonna be raising Caternix quails. I have no idea why you're watching this video. Either way. Now, the way that I actually got into it is, of course, after the extensive research, after, you know, reading the books, after reading the research papers, after watching the YouTube videos, I went ahead and to make sure I got myself started, I went ahead and made the investment and started building the grow out hutch. Now the grow out hutch made out of mostly wood, some hardware parts, took a lot of time. The investment in time was a little bit more than it was in dollars. Uh, as a result, it was pretty much a given that I was gonna go and make sure that I found all of the necessary supplies that I needed along with the either chicks or eggs to get started. Uh, I ended up going the egg route. Now I got my first three sets of eggs off of eBay. Uh, all three sets had no less than, well, no. My third set had a 30% hatch rate. The first two had over a 50% hatch rate. Uh, eggs on eBay are completely possible and that's how I got started. It's probably not the best way to go, but I live in Buffalo, so work with what you have. All right, thanks again for coming to check us out here at New York Eternix. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Also, leave a like for the video and please subscribe. Those subscriptions is what keeps us going here at New York Eternix. Thank you. We'll see you at the next video.